and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. The SEC's approval of spot Ether ETF regulatory filings has yet to spur a rally in crypto prices, which extended their slide during the Asian morning trade. BTC has barely gained over 1% in the last 24 hours to trade around $68,700, while ETH is down around 3% at $3,700. Ether ETFs are not yet clear to trade because the SEC still needs to approve their S1 filings before investors can buy them. The rest of the larger cap alts are in no better state. Solana, Dogecoin, Tuncoin, Cardano, Avalanche, Polkadot and Shiba Inu have all dumped by 5-8%. to BNB, XRP, TRX and BCH are also in the red. Liquidation across all leveraged crypto derivatives positions soared to over $350 million during the day, the most since May 1st, CoinGlass data shows. The bulk of the positions were long betting on rising prices worth roughly $250 million, suggesting that over-leveraged trades were caught off-guard by the sudden price plunge. The global crypto market cap is $2.55 trillion, a 0.25% increase over the last day. The total crypto market volume over the last 24 hours is $86.23 billion, which makes a 38.99% decrease. The total volume in DeFi is currently $7.25 billion, 8.4% of the total crypto market 24-hour volume. The volume of all stablecoins is now $81.01 billion, which is 93.85% of the total crypto market 24-hour volume. Bitcoin's dominance is currently 53.05%, an increase of 0.58% over the day. Ethereum, the world's second largest cryptocurrency, has seen a surge in price after months of stagnation. Analysts are pointing to signs within the derivatives market that this rally might have legs. The taker buyer sell ratio, which tracks the volume of buy orders compared to sell orders in ETH perpetual futures market, indicates a potential rise in buying pressure. The news that the US SEC has approved spot Ethereum ETFs has caused a sharp reversal in market expectations for Ethereum ETF rejection. CryptoQuant reports that ETH's taker buy sell ratio is poised to cross above its one center line, indicating a decline in sell orders and a potential rise in buying pressure. The futures open interest matrix, which tracks the total amount of outstanding futures contracts, suggests more traders are entering new positions, potentially anticipating a price increase. CoinGlass reports that ETH's futures open interest has skyrocketed to an all-time high of $16 billion, indicating a surge in market participation and increased investor confidence, possibly due to factors such as growing institutional adoption of ETH and the upcoming Ethereum 2.0 upgrade. Hashkey Global, the international arm of Hong Kong's Hashkey Group, has added Solana to its list of tradable products. The platform initially listed around 20 digital assets for trading, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, and stablecoins like Tether's USDT. Starting May 24th, Hashkey Global will launch trading for the newly listed SOL USDT pair. However, the asset will not be available in certain regions, including the United States and mainland China, due to regulatory uncertainties. The listing of SOL on the exchange will expose the digital asset to a broader audience across the Asia region, offering them the opportunity to acquire it on a regulated exchange. The Hashkey Group secured regulatory approval from financial regulators in Bermuda in April to allow retail customers to explore the crypto market in compliance with local regulations. Crypto Slam's non-fungible token sales chart saw D-Market guilds of Guardian Avatars and Fantasy Top lead the market with sales of $857,829 and $825,172 respectively. The top of the collections show the increasing demand for Web3 games, which attracted almost $1 billion in investments last month. Ethereum's Board Ape Yacht Club and the captains rounded out the top five collections with sales of $602,545 and $531,806 respectively. The Ethereum network led all blockchains in sales with $6.2 million on Thursday. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission approved spot Ethereum exchange traded funds, allowing these financial instruments to trade on traditional U.S. markets. Bitcoin was the second ranking blockchain with just under $5 million, followed by Solana with $2.34 million. Solana blockchain made headlines with 63,682 transactions highlighting the diversity and competitiveness of the NFT market across different blockchains. 
OKX, a cryptocurrency exchange, has announced that it will withdraw its virtual asset service provider license application in Hong Kong, halting centralized crypto asset trading services for residents starting May 31, 2024. However, OKX assures that customer funds are safe and withdrawal capabilities will not be affected. After May 31, 2024, OKX will only support withdrawal transactions on its platform. However, OKX Web3 services, including self-hosted wallets, will remain available for users in Hong Kong. OKX has also highlighted important points for users to be aware of, such as deposit transactions not being automatically credited to the account after May 31, 2024, and open orders not closed by the specific date being automatically cancelled. Users have until May 31, 2024 to withdraw their assets from OKX accounts. Assets will remain safe in OKX accounts until this date and direct withdrawals or transfer transactions will not be possible after this date. OKX encourages users to close open orders and withdraw assets before the specified deadline and the customer support team is available to answer any questions during this transition. US Pot Bitcoin ETFs have recorded $107.91 million in inflows for their ninth consecutive day of gains, marking the longest inflow since mid-March. The appetite for spot Bitcoin ETFs reflects their massive success since launching earlier this year. The SEC approved the first spot Bitcoin ETFs in January and products from heavyweights like BlackRock, Fidelity and others quickly garnered billions in assets. BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust led inflows with $89 million, followed by Fidelity's Wise Origin Bitcoin Trust at $19 million and Vanex Funds at $9.5 million. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust saw a $14 million outflows, extending its loss streak as investors pivot to other spot ETFs with less fees. BlackRock is set to take over GBTC management as IBIT has rapidly become the leader among spot Bitcoin ETFs sitting at nearly $20 billion after just four months. StockNet's price has been volatile in the past 24 hours, fluctuating between intraday highs of $1.29 and $1.18. STRK was trading at $1.2, a 2.72% decline from the intraday high yesterday. The 24-hour trading volume surged by 755% to $324.17 million, but a 2.72% decline in market capitalization to $1.37 billion accompanied this dip. StockNet's token price experienced notable market fluctuations despite a $1 million grant to Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin. StockNet announced its advancements in Layer 2 solution for Ethereum with the introduction of a zero-knowledge roll-up compatible with the Ethereum infrastructure known as a ZK EVM named Kararot. This shift from using Cairo to incorporating Solidity through the ZK EVM is a strategic move to attract more developers to the StarkNet ecosystem. Starkware CEO Ellie Ben Sasson emphasized this transition as a critical development in StarkNet's growth and maturity. Hong Kong based cryptocurrency exchange Gate.hk has announced its closure on June 1st due to inability to meet any local licensing requirements. The Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission mandated that all crypto exchanges in the region must obtain an operational license. Gate.hk applied for a license on February 28th but withdrew its application on May 22nd due to significant changes to its trading platform. Existing users can no longer deposit funds and withdraw funds until August 28th. The exchange plans to fully shut down its trading platform on May 28th and delist all tokens including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Polygon and Tether. Gate.hk plans to relaunch its services after a comprehensive overhaul to meet Hong Kong's regulatory requirements, including robust anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing measures. The HK SFC is exploring further regulatory developments, including allowing spot Ethereum ETF issuers to include an ETF staking option. Rabbit, an AI company, has denied allegations by YouTube investigator Stephen Fenderson, also known as Coffeezilla, that the company has been transparent about its rebranding and shift into AI. Fenderson accused Rabbit of facilitating a non-fungible token scam and attempting to conceal it, pointing to the company's rebranding from cyber manufacturer to Rabbit. Rabbit's AI founder and CEO Jesse Liu promised many things to the Gamma NFT project supporters but never delivered. Rabbit spokesperson claimed that Rabbit and the Gamma project were separate ideas and ventures under the same company. 
Rabbit R1 AI product received use cases and feedback from users daily with 10,000 users generating over 600,000 interactions in the last 30 days. The company has released updates to address feedback and is launching new features in the past month. Engine, a proof-of-stake dual-layer chain, has introduced Quick Wallet to simplify access to the Web3 ecosystem, specifically for claiming Engine Beam NFTs. The initiative aims to lower barriers to enter by offering users the ability to claim NFTs via email or a securely generated code without initially needing the Engine Wallet. Quick Wallet facilitates a simplified NFT claiming process by adapting a familiar method for traditional Web2 users using simple QR codes and confirmation numbers. It creates a more inclusive and accessible environment by allowing users to transfer their NFTs to a more permanent wallet at their convenience. Quick Wallet is also useful in physical settings, allowing businesses to integrate claim links into digital content or enrich physical products with NFT-backed certificates of authenticity. That's all in this bulletin for now. This is me, Ruchi Sharma, signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3.TV and for more information stories, log on to our website www.3.io or scan the QR code.